someone kick us off. So what did you like most out of that today? Probably a few things. <laughs> um, oh, I, was, I was really proud of the boys. They they handled everything. You know, we knew it might rain at um, I mean, Collingwood. Are, you know, they're a fantastic side. Premiers from last year. They beat us earlier in the year. Um, close game. So we we knew that it was going to be a huge challenge. And the way we the way that the players handled it, they just um, the work rate. I thought, you know, just. They left it all out there, and I was just enormously proud of the effort they put in to, to get that result. You've had a lot of big scalps this year, but this felt extra significant given the occasion. It felt like an eight-point game in the middle of July, in the middle of winter. What does it do for the group? I mean, I, th I think I think if you look at our playing group, there, there's been slow build of belief. You know, I think we've been working really hard on lots of uh, parts of our game over a long period of time, and um, at the start of this season. You know, we thought, you know, there's some things that we're not quite getting right. And the, the players, to their credit, they just took control of it themselves and they, they're just driving themselves and each other to a much higher standard than we have in the past. And, that, and that's what the good teams do. You know, when you, when you play against the very best teams, you, you hear them communicate with each other and you know that they're pushing each other hard. And our players are doing that now. And um, I think when you, when you go today and you're playing Collingwood at the MCG, um, being able to handle that occasion. You know, we handled the dusty occasion earlier in the year. Um, and then this was another opportunity where you're playing a big crowd, a lot of talk about it, a lot of eyeballs watching that game. And the players to handle it is just one step in the right direction for them uh, in the direction, in the future games we're going to have that are hopefully bigger than this one. How important were the days after the Gold Coast loss? Because a lot of people spoke about standards, you were zero and five at the time, but how important was that for putting you in a position where you are now? Oh, I think I know I've said it a couple of times, but that was that was when that was the moment when the players started to push each other and themselves. And so I think from a coach's point of view, I don't think peripher on the peripheral of the playing group, we've done a lot differently since then, but the players have understood the importance of the detail. And I think the Sydney loss was a little bit similar where when we went away from things that we have trained, we, we knew we were going to be average at best. Um, and now, you know, we talked we talked after the game about who who didn't get something right and got that feedback from a teammate and 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 they nearly all put their hand up and then who who celebrated a teammate, not a goal, but who celebrated something that a teammate did that we value, the detail in what we do. Um, you know, whether that's a, a spoil out of bounds or, you know, holding the front position at, from a surge kick in those conditions. Like, we really appreciate and celebrate the detail and the small things which perhaps don't go on a stat sheet. And I think the players have a great understanding of how we want to play and how that looks. And so when we get it right, we know we can be quite potent and we saw some of that today. And when we go away from it, we, we become vulnerable. And unfortunately, we're, we're doing much more of the former at the moment. Sam, your um, overlap handball today was uh, really good, really stood out. Was that by design or was that a byproduct of how the game was played? Um, I mean, I think it was a it was a challenging game for the for the all of the players out there, both teams. But it started off quite dry, a lot of rain, dried up a little bit, and then more rain again. So I think we had a you know you're always balancing up territory and possession in every in every game. How much possession do you want to hold, and how much do you just want to take territory? And we knew that today was likely to be a territory based game, and I thought we handled that really well. I think. Work rate to outnumber at a contest allows overlap. So it wasn't like it was by design. We just knew that if we had enough players around the ball that we, we might be able to get those opportunities. And um, it was interesting, actually, Brett Ratton, he mentioned in the coaches box, he goes, it's not, I don't want to change anything, but it's interesting because we're one-to-one -one kick to handball ratio and we're looking out the window and it's raining and you're thinking, in theory, that's not a great stat, um, but I don't want to touch anything. <laughs> keep your hands off the wheel and whatever the players are doing, just let them keep doing it. The forward line with the obviously the wet weather looked really potent. You had your smalls in Ginnivan, Watson and Bruce hitting the scoreboard. When Kalshi did went off, was that a, a thing that you were looking to try and make that forward line small? Um, I mean Connor McDonald I think he um, I think he kicked four as well. So the, we knew that the smalls on a wet day, um, the Ruckman is vital because there's going to be extra stoppages and Tall's really needs a half contest so I was really happy with Kelsch's game. I thought he halved everything in the air. We know that they've got some potent intercept marking types behind the ball and I thought Kelsch did a great job of being able to halve the contest and just at least get it to ground. Um, 
so he was cramping up and it looked like he was cramping for longer than you would like. And he's, a, he's a, still 18 years old and we knew that Finn was going to give us some running power and gave us a bit of flexibility. And because we had a bit of a lead, you say, OK, how, how do Collingwood get back into this game? And two, two names come straight to me every time, you Dugowie and Dacos. Um, and so not putting Finn on the ground, we thought he'd give us some contest um, in front of the ball as well as have running power. Um, plus, we were able to send him to Nick for maybe five or ten minutes when, when they looked like they had kicked a couple. So um, I think the forward structure worked really well today. You spoke about halving contests. Marby or Joel had a great battle with Darcy Moore. Obviously, in the last quarter, Marbs kicks the, the two goals and gets some reward for his effort. How pleased were you with his effort today? Yeah, I mean, Marms has been so consistent for us. And when he first got to the club, that was the first thing that we chatted about. Was consi- we know your best is fantastic. Um, and, and we just need to make sure that when it's not going your way, you're still producing something that helps the team. And I, full credit to him. You know, I think he's, of the top, of all the top players who are top tackles inside forward 50, if you look at the top 10, I think he's the only one over sort of six foot two when he's six foot six. So... You know, what he's doing without the ball, it's great to look at the stat sheet and say he's kicked this many goals, but we, we look at the pressure and presence that he has and think he's been mostly very, very consistent through the year. Um, he probably missed a couple of chances today that he would have liked to take. He could have really um, had a big day. Jack Ginnerman couldn't have asked for a better game against his old club. I mean, did, did you feel the energy that he brought into the game and also drew from the crowd? Yeah, I mean, I think, obviously... Guinea is one of those players that the the crowd loves, the media loves to talk about, and um, in a, in the preparation we didn't make much of him. We know he's important. We look more at what he does for us as a side. You know, we know that he's been an important player for us across the year, and we've missed him the last couple of weeks. Um, so to get him back. Uh, we knew it would bring a lot of energy and the, the sense of theatre of the game was, was fantastic and I think all of the 72,000 that game would have loved the theatre of the game today. Uh, but for us, it was really important that he played his role and did his job and he did more than that. So I was wrapped for him. I thought the forward line worked really well with him and Nick, um, Dylan and, and Connor. I think all of those guys played their roles really well and we knew that the ground ball would be important in, in the front half and um, thought we controlled that part of the game and, and Luke Bruce was able to sort of finish off some of the work of those guys as well. He wasn't a big possession winner when he was at Collingwood. What's he doing differently at Hawthorne that you know, allows him to get 31 today? I mean, is he playing a different role? Has he got newfound maturity um, playing him differently? Oh, I mean, I think we obviously play a different, different system or different game style to, to Collingwood and he, he probably fits into a different a different position but I mean he, he he's 21 years old so he's obviously a young like we if, if you think about how long it feels like he's been around how many times he's been on a back page or there's been a story about him um, he seems like he's much older but he's 21 years old so he's still maturing he's still growing into his footy he's still learning how to handle different opposition different um, situations different roles Still getting used to his teammates. He's only played, you know, probably 15 or 17 games with the guys he's running around with. So he's going to continue to improve. But it's all come off the back of an enormous work ethic and a desire to prove that he can be a, a fantastic and well-rounded player and not a flash in the pan. And to his credit, in his first, most halfway through his, well, two thirds of the way through his first season with us, he's he's doing a lot right. I think he has become a well-rounded player in the time that he's. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I thought, you know, he, if you look at his role when he was at, he was at Collingwood, he was really important and they play, um, you know, they play some different forwards to the way that we do and um, obviously he's been successful. He's a premiership player at that club. So, um, you know, that's something that I know that he's enormously proud of and he's, he's got a lot of growth in his football as every 21-year-old does. You look at all of our, um, our 21-year-old types, you know, whether that's a, a Josh Ward, who I thought really stood up today after his stint in the, in the VFL, whether it's Connor McDonald, who goes on to kick, kick four today. These, these are all young players that are continuing to grow and improve and they're handling big situations. Like today, when they wake up today, every person that they see in their favourite coffee shop, when they walk down the street, they're all saying, oh, good luck today, good luck today, we'll be watching, we're there. Um, and they're all new challenges for our young players and I'm, I'm wrapped that they're handling, handling those. What about Nick Watson? How has he absorbed so much focus on his goal kicking at such a young age and turned it around in season? His last four kicks a goal of been straight. Um, five, because you'll be pretty quick to tell you that the one that Kelsha touched on the line would have been a goal last week as well. So, I mean, I, I think I think Nick 
he's an exciting player and has been since he was a kid. Um, and he really still is, a, still is a kid. He's only um, 19 now. So uh, I think everyone has always been interested in the wizard. You know, it's just one of those one of those personalities. He's obviously, you know, close to the smallest player in the in the league, and he's an early draft pick. And he's been one of those players that everyone's been interested in. And and so he's had you know a target on his back for his whole whole career really and that includes um, you know his school footy and all those things so he is probably more adept at handling pressure than than most when they come in and um, full credit to him I mean he's not he's not perfect and he's going to continue to grow in his game but um, I'm wrapped with the work ethic that he's putting in to improve every part of his game we I mean you guys will look at the goal kicking but if you watch his first three or four involvements in the game today they were phenomenal chase pressure work ethic um, our our GPS today suggested that halfway through the third quarter he'd already had his highest work rate game for the season so um, you know he's, he's getting better and better in the, last, one more. in the last quarter you went into the, the midfield and you got a clearance is that something you're looking to see him do <laughs> throughout the rest of the season? No that was a bit rogue I think um, so Dylan Moore you know, Dylan has a bit of a license. He can go into the centre bounces and stay as a midfielder for a period of time if he if he likes it. Something we do, um, and he said, "Always, oh, why don't you why don't you go and play my role for a few minutes?" And he, I was sitting next to Will Day on the bench, and I said, "Is that Nick Watson in the centre bounce?" And he said, "Yeah, sure." And sure enough, he gets the clearance, and um, all as well that ends well, obviously in a game like today. So uh, I was really I was really pleased with his all round game and, and the players deserve an enormous amount of credit for how they handled the situation from today because it was a big occasion for us. You know, Colin would have been in lots of these and we haven't been in as many. Um, so I was wrapped that they handled it with such maturity. Thanks, Alice.